أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفناء الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله اللهم رب العالمين والسلام إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من سرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحج حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حك تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيء الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم أما بعد all praises are due to Allah we thank him, we praise him we believe and testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is his hand-picked messenger who has been sent for the success of man in this life and the life hereafter. May the peace, mercy, and blessing of Allah be upon Rasulullah, his family, وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ إِلَى يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Amma Abad, today is a continuation of the khutbah about the inevitable cause, which is none other than death. The last time we discussed that the only successful one on the day of Qiyamah is the one who comes to Allah with a clean heart, not with a lot of money, not with children, not with gold and silver. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ A day when neither wealth nor children will avail the individual except the person that comes to Allah with a clean heart. We did discuss that only قَلْبَ سَلِيمٍ will benefit the individual in the life hereafter. Whoever is saved from Jahannam and is made to enter Jannah, وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ 
وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَعُ الْغُرُوءُ He is the successful one. Allah said, dunya is nothing but deception. So we are living in, an, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a pool of deception. Allah said, to be saved from Jahannam, you need to sacrifice your utmost before death comes to you or before death knocks at your door because when the time is up, it won't be delayed. Allah said in the Quran, many things in preparation for this inevitable cause which doesn't wait for anyone. And it is through death that our, 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 our deeds or our, our destiny is determined. Allah is checking who is the best among <coughs> us in action. Tabaraka alladhi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Alladhi khalaka al-mawta wal-hayata. He created death and life. Liyabuluwakum to test you. It's an examination. We are in the examination hall. What is Allah looking for? Ayyukum ahsan wa amala. Who among you is best in conduct? Now during death and its pain, in the grave and its darkness, and the day of resurrection and its horror, people fall into two groups. When people die, they turn into two groups. When they go to the grave, into two groups. On the day of resurrection, into two groups. When we stand before Allah, into two groups. Now the question is, what group do I belong to? And these groups are made very clear in the Quran. Among them, Allah said, Verily those who say, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا لَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبُصِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاؤُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَسْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَحِيمٍ This is the first group. And this is the group that we want to belong to. Allah said, Verily those who said, Our Lord is Allah alone, without associating partners with Him, and then stood straight, on other words, firm on this statement, on them the angel will descend at the time of their death, telling them, Allah ta'khafu wa la ta'zan. Fear not and do not have any grief, but receive the glad tidings of paradise which you have been promised. Wa abusiru bil jannati leti kuntum to adu. These are those who have submitted totally to the will of Allah. At the time of death, the angels will approach them and tell them to be prepared for jannah. This is the group we want to belong to. May Allah include us in this group. Amen. But then the angels will be telling them, do not fear about what you are going to meet, but then again, do not grieve over what you will be leaving behind of children, family, and wealth. It will be taken care of. If you lived your life according to expectation, the angels will come and say, Allah ta'khafu wa la ta'zanu. Do not fear regarding where you're going. Have no grief regarding your past because you have prepared for it. As for the unbelievers now, this is the second group. When death comes to them and they start suffering its agonies, the pangs of death, then they will be subjected to ignominy and disgrace. This is clearly mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Al-An'am, verse 93, wherein Allah said, And if you could see, if you could but see, when the wrongdoers are in the agonies of death, if you see them in that state, while the angels are stretching forth their hands, saying, deliver your souls. Without an option, deliver your souls. This day you shall be recompensed with the torment of degradation because of what you used to utter against Allah and that which is not true. And you used to reject his ayats, his verses, his evidence, his lessons, his signs, his revelations with disrespect. May Allah save us from being part of this second group. Yeah. Their sorrow shall increase so much so that they will wish to come back to dunya. And in Surah Mu'minun, verse 99, that is mentioned clearly when they said, until when death comes to one of them, he says, my Lord, send me back. Rabbir Je'on. In this state, this group too, when they realize the agonies of death, they will wish that they come back. Rabbir Je'on, please Allah, take me back. 
And Qatada, while commenting on this verse, said, By Allah, I swear to Allah, he would not wish to, this, by saying this statement, Rabbi, my Lord, bring me back, he doesn't wish to come back to his family, or his wealth, or his um, 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 enjoyable life. But by saying, Rabbi, my Lord, return me back to dunya, what that means is in order to change his life and utilize every moment of it. We are not in that state now. We have the opportunity to make the most of the day while the sun still shines. The Sunnah encourages when an individual dies to talk, um, to talk about good deeds of the dead person and abstaining from talking about the evil or misdeeds. According to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Do not abuse the dead for they have gone to meet the consequences of their deeds. Do not abuse them. No wonder if an individual dies, a Muslim for that matter, just say the good things you know about him. It goes without saying that you might have known so many evil things about him, but limit your sayings to the only good things that you know. Again, Omar radiallahu anhu, like uh, uh, it is reported in Bukhari, that Abu Aswad said, I came to Medina while there was an epidemic. Then I sat with Omar ibn al-Khattab. Then a funeral procession passed by and people praised the dead. Omar said, it becomes incumbent. Wajabat. Then another funeral procession passed by and people also praised its owner. Omar said, it's become incumbent. Wajabat. Then the third procession passed by and the people spoke ill of its owner. And Omar commented, it becomes incumbent. Wajabat. Then I said, what is incumbent, Omar? I asked, what, what are you saying? Warna, warna, lana war, mune nyanta, wajabat, why? Then Omar said, Omar answered, I said as the Prophet said, any dead Muslim who four persons testify in his favor, Allah will make him enter Jannah. We said, Ya Rasulullah, and three, then the Prophet sallallahu said, and three, we also said, and two, the Prophet sallallahu said, yes, and two, we did not thereafter ask him of one person. So when people mention good things about the dead, Allah makes Jannah incumbent upon him. So it goes without saying that we only mention the good thing about the dead. Again, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever attends the funeral of a Muslim faithfully and hoping for a reward of Allah and stays with him until Salah is dawn on him and he is buried, he will go back home with two kirats. It is as big as the size of Mount Uhud. And whoever observes Salas on him, then goes back home before he is buried, he gets one kirat. Imagine performing Salah, Salah to Janazah, even though it's Fardu Qifaya. It is, if, if, if a percentage carries it out, it suffices the rest. But the question is, and the advice is, be part of the small percentage that performs the Salah. Because then, you will be rewarded with two kirats if you accompany the, the, the dead until it is buried. If you decide to only pray over him, you will have one kirat. But that is equivalent to Mount Uhud. And the prophet said, even by giving a date, do it in order to save yourself from Jahannam. How about having two kirats? Or at least one kirat, just waiting for that salat to Janazah. As regards deaths, the family of the deceased should hasten to pay it because the believer's soul hung on his debt until it is paid on his behalf. Deaths of Allah should also be promptly paid for. It deserves to be paid more than even the other debts. Ibn Mashhud radiallahu anhu said, A believer has no rest until he meets Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated in a hadith, Abundantly remember the destroyer of pleasures. He said, remember that we destroys your pleasure. And that's nothing other than death. This is the advice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which consists of few words, but it is concise, short but effective, which will separate those who are united. Again, he said, none will remember it while in hardship, but will feel ease, and while at ease, but will feel disturbed. If you are in hardship, remembering death will bring ease. If you are in ease, remembering death will make you think otherwise or feel otherwise. I swear by Allah, 
Each of us will come to an end, and each soul will die. The earth will eat our flesh and drink our blood. We don't have a choice. Just as we walk over it, eat from its fruit and drink from its water. Then it becomes like Allah says in the Quran, and the horn will be blown. The horn will be blown. And whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth will die except that which Allah wills. Then it will be blown again for the second time and at once they will be standing looking at or looking on. This is in Surah Zumar verse 68. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam stood at the edge of the grave and cried. He stood at the edge of the grave of an individual that passed away. He cried then said, Oh brothers, Ibadullah, he said, For this, prepare yourselves. Li wajan lengo. Oh brothers, for this, prepare yourselves. A man asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Who is the most wise of people? The Prophet replied, The one who remembers death most often and the one who is well prepared to meet death. These are the wise Honorable in this life and dignified in the life hereafter. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, The wise one is one who reproaches himself and acts in preparation for what is after death. Al Qayyisu Mandana Nasa wa Amila Lima Ba'dal Maut. Al Hassan may Allah of Omas on him said, Death has exposed the reality of life and left no reason for one with a sound mind to be happy in it. Death in itself has actually exposed the reality of life and it has not left the man with a wise thinking, the man with wisdom to sit merrymaking, knowing that death is behind him. The remembrance of death deprives us from enjoying our families and our wealth. This is Yunus bin Ubaid said. Yunus bin Ubaid said, remembering death has deprived us from enjoying our families and also our wealth. Mutarrif said, death spoils for the people of pleasure their enjoyment. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum wa li sa'iri al-muslimina min kulli dam fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa la ghafuru rahim Inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad الذي نصر الدين وأحب المساكين وكفل اليتيم وهدى إلى صراط المستقيم. أما بعد brothers and sisters, death is enough of a reason to break hearts. Death is enough to shed tears. Death is enough to destroy our pleasures. Death is enough to divide people and ruin all hopes. The death are made to be lonely after having lived their life with families. The death are meant to be lonely after having lived life with their families. They live in darkness after having been in the light. They live in tightness after having lived in white space. And under the soil after having walked on the earth. They become barefooted, naked, and alone. This is what happens. Anytime you see a dead person, he's more, more often than not, he's always lonely. Maybe he's a husband of some, he's a husband to four wives, three wives, one. Or a wife to a man, or a brother to someone. A son to someone, a mother, a father. Many a times when they are dead, they are alone in that room, waiting to be prepared to be taken to the final destination, which is the grave. So be them being alone starts at home. And of course, everyone goes to the grave and leaves them there alone. They were surrounded by light, which will be occupied by darkness, apart from the light that they have sent forth. وَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّي فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُسْرِكْ بِعَبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever hopes to meet his Lord Allah فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Let him provide light for himself. Let him act an act of good deed that will provide him light in the grave. That will provide him sustenance in the grave. That will provide him company in the grave. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَلَى مِنْ أَحَدَى Meanwhile, not associating partners with Allah. The grave is their dwelling. Dust is their shroud. And the mortal remains are their neighbors. Who is your next door neighbor? Number 34 and 35. But for the individual that's dead, mortal remains are the neighbors. 
You are in the grave with your neighbor. Someone who's been buried yesterday or day before yesterday or 15 years ago. Where is your neighbor? Is a mortal remain this time around? Not number 36 or number 37. I might have lived in number 34. But this time around, I'm not there. I'm in the grave. So number 35 or number 33 is not my neighbor. My neighbor is the mortal remains next to me. Back from everywhere you go. When you pass by a graveyard, all you hear is maybe I'm about singing. So the only thing that will accompany you that day is the good deeds. Who cannot hear or call or respond to each other? They live long and own much. These dead people, some of them if not all, lived long and own much, but it did not benefit them when the command of their Lord came. So their, their homes became graves and what they collected was lost. Their money went to their inheritors. Their wives remarried and what they were promised came to an end. Allah says, then they did not think when we created you, then did you not think when we created you uselessly and that you should not come back to me? أَفَحَسِبُتُمْ أَنَّ مَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَبَثَا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think that we've just created you in vain and you will not come back to me, to the grave and to be resurrected and to decide your case? فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ مَلِكُ الْحَقِّ We have to prepare for this day without doubt at all. Have you ever thought, Ibad Allah, about the day when you will die or when I will die, the day that you cannot delay in which there will be no regret or benefit, nor will you benefit yourself, except that which comes from Allah? Remove the cover of heedlessness from your heart, for you will soon be standing before the one who knows the whims and the whips whispers of the hearts, who asks about the actions of the eyes, and holds unaccountable for what we hear. Allah says in the Quran, that day you will be exhibited for judgment. No hidden among you is anything concealed. La yakhfa. Nothing will be hidden from Allah on that day. Hassan, may Allah have mercy on him, said, O son of Adam. Hassan said, O son of Adam, fear Allah and let no two things happen to you at the same time. Ittaqullah. Fear Allah and do not let two things happen to you at the same time. The hardship and agony of death, one, plus sorrow and regret. We will die anyway. And that hardship and agony will come. But after having died, after death, do not let to be punished. Do not allow to be punished. In other words, what Hassan is saying is what Allah said. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Do not ever die until and unless you are in a state of total submission to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Then you will be successful. Beware of agonies and regrets, for death will come to you suddenly, and no one can describe to you what you will face and see. Beware so as not to die while in a state of disobedience, otherwise you will meet Allah with no excuse. No wonder the Prophet wasallam said, he said, hasten to do good deeds before you become busy. If you have time, make hay while the sun shines. Hasten to do good deeds before you will become busy. Are you waiting for such penury which will make you unmindful of devotion? The prophet is asking. Or he asking, are you waiting for such prosperity which will make you corrupt? Is that what you're waiting for? Or such disease that will disable you? Is that what you're waiting for? Or such senility which will make you mentally unstable? Is that what you're waiting for? Or a sudden death? The prophet said, are you waiting for a sudden death to start the acts of good? Or are you waiting for Dajjal, Antichrist? Who is the worst apprehended sign of the hour? Or are you waiting for the hour? Sa'a, he said, that will be the most grievous and bitter one. So we have to be prepared. It, nothing, death doesn't wait for anyone. Okay? It can come anytime. If you are running away from it, you will meet up with him. If you are trying to delay, it will catch you up. Visit the graves frequently for it reminds us of the hereafter. And take a lesson from those who are under the earth and have lost connection with their families and loved ones. Death came to them at a time which they did not expect. And horror came to them in a way which they did not anticipate. Let he who visits the grave ponder and think of the situation of those who have passed away from his friends. Think about your parents, think about your grandparents, think about your loved ones, think about the good people that you used to deal with. Most of them are in the grave, or some of them are in the grave now. They gathered money and had, uh, and, and had high hopes for the distant future. They gathered money with high hopes for the distant future without any guarantee. 
But suddenly they lost all their wish and their wealth did not benefit them. The, the soil of the earth changed their nice appearance and their faces and their bodies became scattered in their graves. Their wives became widows and their wealth become, be, be, um, and their wealth and homes were all distributed to different individuals. Some of them they didn't even wish to give their money to. Their wives became widows and their wealth were distributed. Allah said about them, it will be said to them, and you have certainly come to us alone. You have come back to us alone. Individually, as we have created you the first time, and you have left whatever we bestowed upon you behind you. Allah is saying, now you are here, the dead person, alone, without anything. Whatever I have given you, you have left behind. If at all that has been the reason why I missed my salad, if at all that has been the reason why I kept lying, if at all that has been the reason why I was corrupt, if at all that has been the reason why I was given to every evil, being heedless of the commandments of Allah, what would I explain? What would I explain on that day, brothers and sisters? So fear Allah. May Allah have mercy on each and every one of us. And let's walk for the hereafter. For it is a dwelling in which there is no death for its inhabitants. The structure does not wear out. Youth does not age. And its pleasure is never ending. Its beauty, enjoyment, and, and everything do not change. And its people live under the mercy of Allah. As Allah said in the Quran. They are called, therein will be exalted are you. Da'awahum fiha. Subhanakallahumma. Wa tahiyyatuhum fiha salam. In Jannah, those in Jannah, their greetings will be peace. Wa akhir da'awahum anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And their last call will be praise due to Allah. Allahumma hdina fi man hadayk. Wa afina fi man afayk. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayk. Wa barik lana fi ma aatayk. Wa khina wa shirif anna sharra ma qadayk. Fa inna ka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk. Inna hu la yazidu man wa alayta wa la ya'izzu man aadayk. Da barakta rabbana wa ta'alayk. Nastaghfiruka min kulli dhanbin wa natubu ilayk. Wa nu'minu bika wa natawakkalu alayk. Wa nuzni alayka al-khayra kulla. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannata. Wa na'udu bika min al-naar. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana. Wa qadi lana hajatana. Wa aslah lana umur ورنا يا رب العالمين إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي إذكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروني ولا تكفرون وأقيموا الصلاة